Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Flectus channel. Among the countless aircraft the United States Air Force possesses, only a few can be considered the backbone of their squadrons. And for America's long-range bomber force, there is no other than the B-1 Lancer. Developed in the 1970s by Rockwell International and built in the 80s to replace the B-52, its primary purpose is to transport guided and unguided weapons payloads in the Air Force inventory. It can rapidly launch massive quantities of precision and non-precision weapons against any adversary, anywhere in the world, at any time. A strategic bomber like the B-1 requires regular and detailed maintenance to ensure the plane is always ready for operational missions. Routine inspections include servicing and repairs in the exterior components of the aircraft, usually in the airframe, landing gear, and panel surfaces. <laughs> Further maintenance may involve the engine being removed to repair it or replacing it with a newer version. This process is done by the airmen of the Expeditionary Bomb Squadron, who initially disconnect all the systems, such as fuel lines and electrical connections. <laughs> then, the engine is released from its support while hoists are used to move the engine to be stored for inspection, overhaul, or replacement. Similar refurbishment procedures are done during depot level maintenance, where the plane can get component replacements, system upgrades, or an extension of its service life. Those repairs and replacements end up in performance tests to check the functionality of the parts, like the engines in hush house testing. Here, the engine's performance and reliability are inspected by measuring thrust, fuel efficiency, or temperature. These renewal processes are necessary so that the aircraft can better adapt to current warfare methods. This happened with the B-1 having a significant upgrade known as the Integrated Battle Station Modification. It was an eight-year project to enhance the operational capabilities and situational awareness of 60 aircraft, including the Lancer. Such a project focused on three main additions, including an integrated data link to improve plane communication with more efficient data sharing. A vertical display unit was installed to provide better awareness for the flight crew, and a central integrated test system that eases the maintenance and troubleshooting procedures. Development and installation of such devices 
acquired a team of 120 mechanics and support personnel at the Oklahoma City Air Logistics Complex. The team's effort allowed the revitalization of the B-1B Lancer, ensuring it remains a formidable element of the precision strike force. Once the aircraft has gone through the maintenance and improvement process, it is ready to be prepared to carry out missions. For this, the aircraft is loaded with the proper equipment and weapons necessary to complete the crew's objectives. Special tools are used to transport the weapons and aid in the installation done by the airmen. This includes the diesel-powered BL-1 weapons loader that transports and loads weapons and ammunition, which can be carried externally by the B-1 Lancer. This feature allows the bomber to increase its payload, meaning that two would equal three bombers worth of weapons. Thanks to having six anchor points under the fuselage, airmen can attach the weapon pylons, increasing the aircraft's versatility in planning and executing missions. We are demonstrating uh, that the B-1 has the capability to carry weapons and employ them externally uh, for the first time to my knowledge since the, uh, really the 1980s. With all the cargo prepared, the B-1 Lancer is ready to take off. Here, the procedure starts with the pre-flight checks done by the pilot and the members outside the plane. Verifying fuel levels, engine performance, flight controls, avionics, and other critical components. The ground crew and traffic control start guiding the plane through the runway, taking into account other possible planes at the airstrip. Then the pilots receive the takeoff clearance from the control tower once it is ensured that there are no other aircraft in the vicinity, ending with the B-1 lifting off the ground. Thanks to its forward wing settings, the aircraft can do takeoffs more efficiently, reducing fuel consumption. In the air, the B-1 can demonstrate all its recognized capabilities, starting with the variable geometry wings that allow wing settings. As with the takeoff process, the wings can be configured during flight to improve maneuverability during subsonic and supersonic flights. Those handling characteristics are enhanced by its turbofan after-burning engines, which are suitable for high-speed flights, reaching a maximum speed of Mach 1.2. The pilots are aided by an extremely accurate global positioning system aided inertial navigation system that provides precise navigation and target engagement. Such systems integrate with weapons control to increase the accuracy of the devices, including the bomb dropping mechanism.
This integrated bomb release unit works together with the weapons management system to release the munitions with precise timing. Although the performance of the B-1 has strengthened the Air Force, it is not the only aircraft able to provide strategic bombing capabilities. This is the case of the B-52 Stratofortress, which is the predecessor of the B-1 and has been in service for more than 70 years. However, its design and improvements have made it an important tool for U.S. combat forces. Manufactured by Boeing in 1952, this aircraft is used as a long-range, subsonic, jet-powered strategic bomber. It has had historical significance considering it has been in several important operations, such as delivering 40% of the total weapon drops during Desert Storm or providing air support during Operation Enduring Freedom. All were achieved thanks to its characteristics, such as its ability to fly at altitudes of 50,000 feet being able to carry a wide range of ammunition, from gravity bombs to guided missiles, or be equipped with surveillance and targeting devices, like electro-optical viewing sensors and advanced targeting pots. Timing, one away. This equipment is controlled from the cockpit, where the pilot and co-pilot are seated side by side, which aids communication and coordination. Here, they have all the special instruments and equipment of the B-52 at hand, from the defensive systems to the crew's ejection control. Pilots work from the cockpit alongside the ground crew to perform pre-flight procedures. Pilots are informed of the weather conditions, which will determine the best route to take to reach the destination, as well as alternative paths. Depending on the type of mission, the weapons are prepared with real ammunition or mock ordnance for training purposes. It just takes a long time because we have 27 bombs and each bomb requires specific pre-flight for each one of them. So moving a ladder around, climbing up, fitting in between all these can take a long time. So it's a labor intensive process, so that's why we give ourselves extra time during the pre-flight. Thanks to its multiple features, the B-52 proves to be one of the key pieces of the U.S. Air Force when it comes into action. In addition to its great bomb carrying capacity and aiming devices, the B-52 has undergone improvements that extended its operating life through 2050. When the B-52 is in operation and bombing, a specific point is required, and the crew uses radar systems to calculate the bomb launch point. This tool uses speed, altitude, and wind condition data from other sensors to determine the best location to launch the munitions. With the enhanced vision system, the crew can adjust the mechanisms in the bomb bay before launching the bombs. The capabilities of these strategic bombers demonstrate their great importance for the Air Force.
Older aircraft designs, like the B-52, have been versatile enough to adapt to modern combat strategies. Upgrading this plane with new avionics and defense systems allows them to continue their relevance. Thus, together with the B-1, they become the cornerstones of the U.S. military forces. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.